Dan's Garage. Today is March 15, 2010. Today's subject, who is actually responsible for tragic accidents? Well, today I was watching a YouTube video on open carry, and there was a gentleman by the name of Griffin Dix who was giving his opinion. Now, Griffin Dix, back in 1994, his son Kenzo died in an accidental shooting. Kenzo was at his friend's house, Michael So, pulled out his father's 9mm Beretta and shot Kenzo in the chest. Michael Saul later said that the shooting was unintentional. He replaced a full magazine with an empty one without realizing that there was a bullet still in his chamber. Now, that's being said, that's just one of my topics today. Griffin Dix and his wife, Lynn, tried to sue the gunmaker Beretta, alleging that the 9mm pistol was defective, well, defectively designed because it lacked an indicator that shows that the bullet was still in the chamber and that the device did not lock out any unauthorized users. Well, what about Michael Soule's parents? Aren't they responsible? Well, Dick settled with them for a judgment of $100,000. Now, Dick's lawsuit to Beretta, uh, he actually had three of them. Uh, the first one he lost, and he went on to sue him two more times and lost those as well. Now, on that, with any tragic accident with parents losing their children, they go on to um, work for companies or that have to do something with their death. Like if you lose your child to cancer, you go on to a cancer society and try to work for them for charity events and things of that nature. Well, the same thing with these two. Um, they had good intentions and they went on to uh, work for a position for a violent free society and also the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence. Now, that's where I see Mr. Dix representing his chapter of the Brady campaign. Uh, and his opinion on this video is what um, I'm using as today's clip. Now let's go on to view that clip. I think they're carrying guns in part to intimidate people um, and it, it does intimidate people. Um, you know, rightfully, it makes people afraid and, and uh, um, you know, because it makes them less safe. Now, of course, this is not what Mr. Dix was talking about when he made that statement. But you can clearly see he could mean people from open carry members or police officers. That's why I added that picture. Because, let's face it, police officers are citizens with guns who enforce the law. Which brings me to my next point. Mr. Dick said they. Now, who are they? Well, in this case, he's referring to members of the open carry movement. Now, I don't know if Mr. Dix did any research on the open carry issue, but the reason people open carry is for personal protection. Now, just like any group of people, you're going to have some that don't use the right judgment which means it's not the gun. It's the person behind the gun. If you're a police officer not using good judgment, bad things are gonna happen. Example, there was a Las, Las Vegas uh, sheriff who almost shot a partner while he was handcuffing a subject. And police officers have been known to accidentally shoot an arm, unarmed person. Now these are trained police officers. So that's the point. It's not the gun, it's the person behind the gun. Now in the first point, uh, let's talk about the first point, which is who's actually to blame. Now, let me give you an example. Two kids, two teenagers are going out on a Friday night. And one decides to take his father's uh, sports car. Two are having fun driving around, and while waiting for a traffic light to turn green, the driver decides to race the car next to him. Well, a quarter mile down the street, he loses control and wraps the car around a pole, killing his best friend. Now, Everybody is, hor you know, is, is, is distraught over this accident, but the parents of the dead teen wouldn't so sue the car company because, because the car company didn't build a device to prevent unauthorized drivers or even design the car too fast for the child to handle. No, that wouldn't have any merit. So I don't see why you would try to blame Beretta for this mistake. 
you know, we know that Sue's father clearly did not keep the gun locked up so his child could get a hold of it. So, you know, if you do have a child and you do have a handgun, please lock it up. Um, these accidents should never happen. So, those are my points on, one, who's actually responsible. Uh, two, it's not the gun, it's the person behind the gun. Uh, those are my points. If you agree or if you don't agree, please comment below. And just remember to keep it clean and don't get uh, too uh, derogatory and uh, don't try to uh, blame people or, or, you know, I see a lot of comments and I, I probably done the same thing and made some comments that were unnecessary and people took the wrong way. But let, let Give me your points of view, and uh, if they're good or bad, uh, I like to hear a lot of people's point of view, and I acknowledge which ones I believe are have merit and which ones uh, might have merit, and, and I'll even put a couple in there that uh, don't have any merit at all. But um, this is my opinion. This is Dan from my garage, so bye, y'all. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.